What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. Um, today I'm starting a new series that I'm really excited about. Um, it's a series about using Photoshop for architectural visualization. And this is probably the most important tutorial that I'm going to do because I'm going to talk about um, layers and masks. So as always, today's video is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you're finding it helpful, please make sure to check out that link in the notes down below and consider supporting the show. Um, now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So where I want to start is Photoshop can be a little bit intimidating when you first open it up. Um, it's got kind of this big user interface and all these different tools and uh, all of that. And uh, I just want to start off by saying don't be intimidated by the, um, by the workspace or the fact that there's a lot of people out there that are really good at Photoshop. I mean, it's basically just a question of learning the, way, the process, the way things work, and practicing. So, I mean, it's, it's something that everyone can pick up, so don't be intimidated by it. Um, so this, this is an example image. This is an image that I downloaded off of Wikipedia, and I'll link to it in the notes down below. You can download it and follow along. Though with what I'm talking about, basically anything, any photo will work. Um, so Photoshop is a very advanced program that allows you to edit photos in a lot of ways. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the basics of working with both layers and masks in order to add edits to your photos. So to start off, let's talk a little bit about layers. So your layers window is going to show you information about all the different layers in your project. You can find that in the lower right hand corner of your screen. If you don't see that, you can turn it on and off by tapping the F7 key or by going to Window, Layers. Just for your note, I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC, the 19.0 release. So if you're looking at this and um, your workspace looks a little bit different, you may have a different version. Generally speaking, most of these things are going to be the same though. So the way that layers work in Photoshop is Photoshop shows the different layers in a, in a bottom to top order in your image. So what you have over here is you'll have multiple layers with different things on them and the things that are on the top layer are going to be the th or the things that are on the top of the list are going to be the top layer of things that are displayed in your image. So let's say for example that I was to right click on this layer and I was to duplicate this layer and I just made another copy of this image. So we'll just call this image copy and click OK. And now I have two different versions of this image in my model. And you can turn them on and off by clicking the little I in the text next to the preview. But just as an example, let's say that I took this image copy that I made and I used the scale tool. And you can go to, and in order to use the scale tool, you can just click on this image and you can go up to edit, transform, scale. And I've applied a couple different keyboard shortcuts to this um, that kind of work for me. So you can also, uh, and I may talk about this in a different video, but you can add your own keyboard shortcuts. But let's say for example that I took this top layer and I was to scale it down and I was to hold the shift key in order to lock the aspect ratio. But if I was to scale this image down and then hit the enter key, now you can see how this little preview icon right here shows my image smaller. But the way that Photoshop is displaying this is you have your background, which is on the bottom, and then you have your image copy, which is on top. And you can see how since it's on top of this list, it's showing up on top in this image. So if I was to click and drag this so that it was below the background, so you're also gonna wanna unlock your background before you do this. So if you click on your background, you can see how you can't edit it right now because it's locked. You can just click on this little lock in order to turn that off. And so now I can edit both of these. So if I click this image copy and I drag it down below my layer zero, you can see how it's not gonna show up anymore because it's now behind this image. So that's how you can order different things within your Photoshop within your Photoshop projects. So you can also hide and unhide each one of these images by clicking the little I. So I can turn this image copy on and off and I can also turn the background on and off once I unlock it. So you can use this to hide and unhide different images within your Photoshop projects. Now that you have kind of a 
an understanding of the way that layers work or the way that they uh, display things in your model, I'm going to go ahead and undo these changes that I made and we're going to go in and we're going to start editing our images. And so there's two different ways that you can edit your images. So like for example, let's say that I was to select this image copy layer by clicking on it and then I was to go up to the image option and apply an adjustment. So if I was to go to image adjustments and let's say I took a color balance and I made it more of a red color balance and we're not going to worry about how realistic this is going to work in this tutorial this is more just so you can kind of see um, what these effects are doing so let's say that I took this and I really gave it a red color balance and I hit OK so you can see how my image got changed when I did that so now I have more of a reddish image so I'm starting to kind of make changes within my model and so now let's say that I came in here and I made a couple more changes so if I went to image adjustments and let's say that I adjusted the curve which is something that will allow you to adjust a lot of different things in your model like your brightness and your contrast but let's say that I was to brighten the upper end of this and darken the lower end of this to create kind of a different effect within this Photoshop image and then click OK. So let's say I was to come in and do that and then let's say that I came in here with a brush and I just wanted to paint something with my brush tool in here. So let's just say that we were to paint something out in the upper left hand corner. So you can see how everything that I've done has been an edit that I've made within this image copy object. And the problem with this is now let's say that I wanted to go back and make a change to the color balance that I did earlier. There's no way to go back in and make that change. So what you can do is you can go in and you can look at your history. So you can go to window history and it'll show you a history of the changes that you made so if you wanted to you could go back to your color balance option so you could basically undo to that point and then start making changes but the issue with that is that you'd lose all of the other changes that you'd made in here so like when I adjusted my curves and my brush tool when I added those things in here there's no real way to go back in and adjust the color balance that I made a couple steps ago. And so what happens is basically this is called destructive editing. And what that means is you're making changes to your original image and you can't really go back and adjust those changes. So um, it's fine if you know what you want to do and you're just going to make a change maybe two and you know what this is going to look like and it's going to be no problem but the issue is a lot of the time what you're doing in Photoshop is you're kind of adjusting things so that they achieve a certain look and if you edit your images this way then you can't go back and make those changes and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at another way to make those changes to your to your Photoshop images so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to undo back to when I had duplicated my layer. In fact, let's just delete it and start over again. So I'm going to close my history and what you can do is you can come in here and you can right click on your image copy layer and you can click delete layer to delete all of this out. So we're just going to kind of start over again. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to unlock our background layer so that we can come in here and we can make edits to it. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at this layer right here and then if you look down at the bottom of your layer section there's this little circle with sh um, that's half shaded well if you click on that you can create what's called an adjustment layer and an adjustment layer will let you adjust this layer in this object without actually changing the object and so let's do what we did before where we're going to click on this so first of all click on your layer and then click on the fill or adjustment layer option and we're going to do the same thing we're going to go up to color balance and we're going to add a color balance to our to our image and so when we do this you can see how when I clicked on this this popped up the color balance menu over here on the right hand side and it also created a layer on top of your layer zero background and so now 
any changes that we make are going to get applied to this adjustment layer rather than directly to this image. So that way when we do this we can adjust each one of these individually. So let's do the same thing we did before. We'll give this more of a red color balance. And you can do whatever you want with this. I'm going to make this kind of an extreme effect just so we can see it so that it shows up well in your YouTube image. But now that we've added this color balance object, what we're going to do is we're going to add another effect. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my mouse on the color balance one object. So I'm going to click on that. Don't click on the little mask, the little white mask. These are getting applied as a mask. And we'll talk about masks in just a minute. But for now, I'm just going to click on this object. And then I'm going to click in here. And I'm going to add another effect. So you can see how when I clicked on this, this brought this in on top of your color balance one adjustment layer. And so like, for example, if I was to delete this layer and I was to click on my layer zero, and then add a curves effect, you can see how it shows up below your color balance one. And so what, what this is doing is this is basically applying this to the layer right above whatever object you have selected. And you can also adjust these and move them around to adjust the way that your different effects work. But let's say that I was to come in here and I was to just kind of adjust the curve in this object just to kind of change the way that it looks. So you can see how um, that curves effect is being applied to my photo and once again I realize this isn't a super realistic view but um, it gives you kind of an idea of what you can do and so the nice thing about this is I've applied this curves effect to this image but I can still go back to the color balance and change it so I can click on this adjustment layer and then come back in here and adjust this by clicking the slider so you can see how I'm no longer stuck with what I had before. So I can come in and I can do the same thing with the curves. I can change that and adjust it however I want to change it. And each one of those is on its own adjustment layer. And then the other nice thing about this is you can also turn these on and off. So like for example, if I wanted to see what this would look like with just the curve adjustment without the color balance, I can click on the eye and I can go all the way back to my original image if I want to. So all of these are in here as different layers. And so it really makes going back and making changes really easy. And you can apply as many of these as you want. So you could come in here and you could adjust the brightness or the contrast um, within your image by just adding different layers in here. And so you can also delete them by right clicking on them and, de and clicking delete layer. And so you can apply as many effects as you want to your object. But now I want to talk about another important tool in Photoshop. And that tool is masking. Basically, the way that a mask works is it's something that you apply to a layer. And it's basically a big grayscale canvas. And whenever you add color to it, based on the color that you add, it either conceals or reveals things on the layer that you've applied it to. So practically speaking, what this means is whenever you edit your masks, anything that you paint as black is going to conceal the effect on whatever layer you do that on. And white is going to reveal the effect for whatever layer you're on. So, and there's a little rhyme that I've heard multiple people use, and I think it's kind of dumb, honestly, because I don't find it all that helpful, but it's white to reveal, black to conceal. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me because there's nothing about that rhyme that helps you keep anything in order, or, um, I mean, it would be very easy to say white to conceal and black to reveal, and it still sounds the same. So I don't think it's very helpful, but if that helps you, it's white to reveal and black to conceal. And so, for example, in this image, these, these effects are actually being applied as masks. And so you can tell that something's being applied as a mask because it'll have a little object over here for the object. Sometimes if it's an image, it'll have the little thumbnail image over here. And then there'll be a little square um, filled with either black or white. And so like for example, let's say that I have this color balance layer and I want to apply the color balance to this building and everything below but not to the sky up above. Well what we would do is we would come into our color balance layer and click on this layer mask thumbnail. And so this layer mask thumbnail is giving you a preview of what that looks like. And so what we would do is we would paint black 
on this image wherever we want to hide this effect. And so all we would do is let's say that we wanted to use the brush tool in order to do this. You would just click on the brush tool and you would make sure that your foreground color is set to black. And then all you would do is you would just come in here and you would paint on top of this image. And you can see how when I paint on top of this image, anywhere where I paint black, you can see how it's no longer applying the effect. So I'm basically concealing the effect within this object. And one way that you can check on this and that you can look at it a little bit more in detail is you can do an alt click on this thumbnail. So what I would do is I would look at the layer mask thumbnail, I would hold down the alt key and I would click on it. And you can see how when I hold down the alt key and click on it, this shows me where my layer mask is showing up in my object or in my image. So if I do another alt click, it'll take me back. You can see how that black is basically corresponding to the areas where you're kind of seeing through this effect. And so what you could do is you could come in and you could paint out the rest of this. And probably what I would do if I was gonna do this with the brush tool, and there's actually a better way to do this um, that we may talk about in a second, but if I was gonna do this with the brush tool, I would go ahead and come in here and get the lower edges, and then I would just do an alt click on this object, and I would go ahead and I would color everything else in. So you can see how you can color in the rest of the gaps by doing that alt click and kind of previewing where your mask is. And then I would do an alt click again um, in order to go back to my actual image view. And another helpful thing that you can do here if you don't want to do that is you can click on your layer mask view and you can just type the backspace or not the backspace, the uh, backslash key. So if you tap the backslash key, basically what that's going to do is that's going to show you in red wherever your layer mask is in your wherever your selected layer mask is in your image. So you can type that backslash key to turn this on and off to see where that layer mask is. So you can do that with the brush tool. You could also use a tool like the selection tool um, in order to come in here and apply that that way. So if I was to undo all of this so that my mask is gone and like let's say for example I just wanted to use the quick select tool. Just come in here and select this really quickly. And I'll hold the alt key and click and drag to unselect along this edge. But let's say for example that I wanted this whole area in the sky up here to not have that mask. You could just select it and then you could go to edit, fill, and you would just tell it to fill with the foreground color, which in this case is black. So if I hit okay, you can see how what that did is that filled in my entire selection with black in my layer mask. So now this whole area is masked with black so that we've concealed this effect in that selected area. And so not only can you do this with effects like the ones that you've applied right here, you can also do this with images. So like for example, I'm gonna select my background layer and I already have this selected so we're gonna go ahead and use this selection. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this layer and then we're gonna go down and we're gonna click on the, we're gonna click on the add layer mask option. And so when we click on an add layer mask option, you can see how since we had something selected in here, it goes ahead and it applies a layer mask to all the areas that I had selected. But you can see how the problem here is that this is backwards. So it's masked out your building instead of your sky. And so you can change that by clicking on this layer mask over here and then tapping control I on your keyboard. And when you tap control I on your keyboard, you can see what this is doing is this is flipping your black and your white. So it's inverting your layer mask. So you can click that and swap those back and forth. Um, and that would work for your color mask or your color balance too. So I could flip that by doing a control I on that one as well. But you can see how with this layer mask, what that allows us to do is that actually allows us to conceal parts of the image. So in this case, we've basically concealed our sky in this image. And so now what we could do is we could import another sky image and put it in the background. And I'll talk about this more in depth in another video. But since we've masked out our sky, we can just go to file and I'm gonna use place embedded and I'm gonna find a sky image. So I'm gonna bring this sky image in that I've just downloaded from online. 
And you can see how what this is doing is this brings this in and it's giving me the option to resize it. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this out so that it fits in the background of my image. And once I've kind of sized it the way that I wanna size it so that it fits, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit the enter key. And you can see how it brought this in and because it brought it in above the background image, it's just covering everything up. And what I wanna do instead is I wanna click and drag that down so that it's below this image. And I'm also gonna go up and I'm gonna invert this color balance real quick. And so you can see how what I could do, and we'll go ahead and turn our curve adjustment off and also our color balance adjustment off so you can see what this is doing. But basically, since we had masked out part of our image, in this case, the sky image, so this area up here, it's, show, it's allowing the image to show through from the layer down below. So if I turn my sky image on, you can see that that's at the layer down below, and that shows up in here as a new sky. So that mask is allowing me to put something behind my image that shows up wherever, wherever everything was masked out. And then one other thing I wanna note is you'll note right now if I turn this color balance on, since I have it masked, it's only applying to my building. I'm actually gonna turn that off and I'm just gonna use my curves adjustment because that looks a lot more realistic. Um, so you can see how what this did basically when I turn this on is this is applying to both your sky image and your building image down below. So basically it's, it's applying to everything that's beneath it. So you can see how that applies to both your sky and your building. And so everything looks kind of more realistic because that is being applied to everything beneath it. I'd love to hear from you guys about what you thought about this, if you found it helpful, what you'd like to see from my Photoshop tutorials. And I'm really excited to branch out into some more architectural visualization stuff as well. So leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. You can check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.